Hello everyone, uh, and today I'm gonna share my opinion of reading the book Outlive, uh, The Strategy for uh, Longevity by Peter Atia. I don't know if I recall the under title, right? Don't, don't get me wrong, uh, it was some time ago. Anyways, um, this book is, um, let's say, put the prevention in the spotlight and uh, Peter also says that if you want to cure something, go to a doctor, which he calls this type of medicine that we have now, it's medicine 2.0. But if you want to prevent it and work on toward preventing four of the horseman diseases, which he calls type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, uh, cancer and uh, neurodegenerative diseases uh, as Alzheimer's and other uh, such so you will uh, need to work towards your prevention, which he calls medicine 3.0, which I really liked that approach that really you need to work everything you can to prevent some disease uh, from happening in the first place. Um, then he would uh, go into uh, each of the diseases, how it's formed, what we can, what we can do right now, I mean in uh, medicine 2.0 and what's the best as a medicine to prevent it and how to do it, which is really cool. And then the uh, second part of the book is also dealing with um, uh, exercise and uh, exactly what to exercise, how to exercise, what types of exercises are good. But generally, he just recommends move because uh, there are abundance of scientific uh, uh, appro uh, appro approvables, let's say it, uh, exercises uh, can do much more than any other Thing, uh, combine, let's say, nutrition, sleep, whatever. So whatever you do, just go out. He even says, put this book down and go out exercise, uh, which is really cool. Anyways, um, in the nutrition section, I expected so much because I am a little bit of, uh, stressing a lot of nutrition and I follow these uh, diet gurus, which is either low, ca low calories or keto or uh, vegan diet, which one's best. And he just dreads when someone asks him that question because um, that's not proven to be anything of a scientific worth, uh, which is all the studies that were conducted were uh, not reliable. And uh, there is no concrete proof that of the causality, right? That you buy once that thing you eat, it causes longevity or um, uh, early death. Anyways, what he found uh, let's say beneficial is uh, taking enough of protein into your diet. Uh, he found it crucial if you want to build muscles, if you want to prevent, let's say, uh, early uh, breakage of the bone or not stepping correctly. Uh, you can exercise, but if you don't enter, let's say, a proper amount of protein, you will not build the muscles, you can even lose it, etc. etc. So, read that part, it's really good. Uh, so, he said, just like, right, um, also. His point of uh, on the intermittent fasting got me really um, shocked. I'm really a strong believer uh, believer in in intermittent fasting. I think that you know, body recovers, regenerates, and a lot of hormones and tissues are healing. Which he thinks, I mean, he, you can do, but not this. Let's say 16-8 intermittent fasting or things like that, where you eat in a certain uh, window of uh, time and then you don't eat another period. He says that you could benefit from, let's say, skipping one day entirely. And you could do it, let's say, twice a week that way. That could produce some sort of benefits. But generally, intermittent fasting is not something he will go for. I mean, he tested all of it. Diets and exercises and intermittent fasting on, on himself. And that's what he has to suggest. Um, anyways, uh, that's about the intermittent fasting. So, uh, no fasting, but what he strongly believes in is a reduced calorie intake, you know, but, you know, we always say the calories matter. Yes, you need to pay attention to what you're eating and you need to pay attention how much you're eating. And he really strongly believes that you should get up from the table, uh, not fully loaded uh, and eaten like a here. So <laughs> just stop when you're about, let's say, 80% full and go out, walk, exercise, or do whatever. Uh, other uh, thing that he stresses importance on is sleep, good quality sleep. He used to be the guy like, who needs to sleep? You know, he was medical resident, he barely slept, like, let's go, let's go, let's go, coffee and everything to stay awake with. Now he realized 
And I also realized throughout my life, and I'm stressing a lot, my husband can <laughs> confirm that I'm really a sleep uh, Hitler. I really just like, you need to go to the bed at that time, period. you need to go to the cool and dark room, you need to have peace and quiet while you're sleeping, you need to have a uh, good quality and good amount of sleep each night for better performance throughout the day. So that's his also a, a recommendation. So he and I matched. Um, and the last thing that he reviewed in his book is uh, mental or emotional health, uh, which I also kind of, I don't know, I didn't go deep into that. Um, let's say um, I didn't observe that part of the life uh, as he was thinking, because I don't know, I have the impression that anyone in these days can find something that he's not performing enough, that he is angry enough, that he's not doing something enough and that he can blame himself and go into that depression, anxiety and other mental di uh, disorders uh, loop. And I just, I didn't consider such thing from, I mean, I never go into it for myself. I was just like, I'm okay, I'm happy, I'm keep going. And I, maybe I'm lucky, I still don't have any issues to go through, but many people will recognize themselves as what he described like that something some things are going under noticed and that you just need to pay attention and address any issues you might have even if you think that you're thriving and everything with some things maybe just uh, be uh, toxic for your environment not for you and if you care for let's say your family people friends and you're not doing something good you should address it and um he's just now uh stressing the importance importance of mental health which i can uh, kind of understand like can you imagine going into the let's say old age and you're not happy with your life and you just um don't have the desire to get up in the morning and you don't even have the motive to, to to wake up in the morning, it, it could be really, really bad. So that kind of happiness, emotional happiness, satisfaction with yourself, with your friends, with your environment, where you live, what you do, it is really important. So if you're doing all three things about uh, before mentioned, exercise, good nutrition, sleep, but you're just deeply depressed, you're not enjoying the life, then what's the point? That makes sense to me. And I really like that. Uh, so with it, he finishes this book and uh, he also gives the practical advices of what to test if you are, let's say, your family has cardiovascular diseases, like go check that, that and that. If you have predispos predispositions for early Alzheimer's, go test that and that. So I really plan on <laughs> buying this book just for those specific tests that he mentioned so I don't forget. Uh, anyways, this is an amazing book for... Um, a non-fiction genre in this 2023 and I will definitely recommend it as one of the best book of non-fiction in 2023. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next year. Thanks for watching.